Hello and welcome back to The Draw Pod. It's me, your host, Elise. In this episode, I'll be chatting while doing a painting using some new gouache paints that I have purchased. I'm very excited. If you're new here, this is a visual podcast where I draw something and chat with you as I go. You really don't have to watch the video to know exactly what's going on, and if you prefer to listen to it on a podcast app, it's available everywhere. But if you want to watch the YouTube video, check out my channel, which is always linked in the description of these podcasts. Also, if you would like to see what the final image looks like, check out my art Instagram at Elise underscore draws. So hopefully you can tell, but I have a microphone now. I promised you guys that I would get it, and I finally pulled it off, made it happen. (laughs) Um, I still need like a windsock or some sort of cover for the microphone so it doesn't like pop as much, but I'm really excited to finally have something better to record on, you know, investing in myself in this podcast. But anyway, the topic of this week's episode is how I get out of my house every day. Over the past few months of settling into my post-grad living at home lifestyle, I've figured out a few good and safe ways that I change up my day by leaving my room. Um, If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see me playing with some of my new gouache paints that I ordered to paint a still life from the Instagram page at still here still life. I am really trying to push myself to get comfortable with gouache because I think it's a really great medium for illustrators. So stay tuned to see how this adventure goes. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. It was really fun. I accidentally bought acrylic gouache, which I was not intending to do, Um, you know, kind of on the spectrum of painting and things so like you have acrylic paint which is very opaque and kind of shiny and it dries really fast and then on the other end of this spectrum you have watercolor paint which um, takes a long time to dry and it's very thin and it's very easy to lift and if you make mistakes you can usually remove them using water and then in between those two you have gouache which is what I'm using in this video and it kind of has the best of both worlds. It's pretty opaque but still a little thin and you can paint over it really easily unlike with watercolor it's kind of hard you have to kind of be intentional with your layering but with gouache you can just kind of go over it Um, but then you have two other bits that are kind of leaning more towards either end of the watercolor acrylic spectrum. Um, I think I probably meant to just get normal gouache or watercolor gouache because I am more comfortable with watercolor but this was really fun to use and so acrylic gouache like this it definitely dries out and you can't re-wet the paint to get it to move and do things again but you can um you can still paint over things and it still has kind of the look of gouache so this was really fun I took my time with it it was great anyway so all that painting nonsense aside um let's get into some of the little segments that I have for each episode before I talk about the main topic of the episode so my little segments are a life update something new I learned and a book update So as for my life update, I had the chance to visit my grandparents and cousins in Houston last weekend, and that was just so lovely. It's been quite some time since we have seen them, and it was really nice to do something a little different. We also, on our way in, stopped by this really delicious Jewish deli. The name escapes me now, but oh my gosh, I had a wonderful ham and cheese, like grilled cheese sandwich, and some Jewish chicken noodle soup. It was so good and so filling, and then I just just had some great food over the past weekend but yeah and now I'm back in Austin and as I'm writing this I'm hoping to have a really great week ahead and I have had a great week you know I wrote this a lot earlier on in the week but yes I can confirm from my past self I have had a really wonderful week so far I've finally gotten back to getting enough sleep every night My issue for a while, and it still kind of is, is that I was staying up a little too late but not getting enough sleep because my internal clock just has me up at like 6.30 every morning and I just like could not sleep in. So, you know, I kind of have to adjust the going to bed time of getting my sleep in. But with more sleep though, I've been having really strange dreams. Like the main recurring dream I've been having over the past few months back at home in Austin is this recurring stress dream where as hard as I try to get things down, I simply cannot memorize my lines in high school. Like I'm set in my high school 
theater department. I'm like at school and I've got other things going on, but I have not memorized my lines from the musical and I have to be off book in like an hour. And for some reason, I just, I just can't even get the first two lines down. Um, so that's kind of wacky. Um, I, I guess compared to other stress dreams I could be having, I'm pretty fine with having theater related stress dreams because, you know, it's not very consequential or anything, but anyway, um, wild stuff. But yeah, overall I'm doing pretty well and I'm starting to film some more videos coming up this week. I'm kind of running out of my pre-recording that I made, which I've been going off of. So I made like four videos in one week and that's kind of just what I've been doing. And then I make the podcast as I go, but I'm finally running out of all of that. So I've got some new stuff coming. I'm going to be, here's some spoilers, but I'm going to be doing another Spanish language update because I've been working on learning Spanish. And um, I'm also going to be doing a video about drawing every day to see how it improves my skills, like drawing for an hour every day for a week and some stuff like that. And maybe a few more college related things. So I'm really excited to finally get those up. And oh, that's one other thing I wanted to mention. I've been doing some Skillshare classes because I have a free trial and I'm trying to make a video off of it as well and doing like illustration videos and classes on there. And I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'll have to keep y'all posted and definitely watch the video whenever it's up. But yeah, I'm really enjoying Skillshare so far. And that was not sponsored, but maybe one day it will be. I'm also at like 287 subscribers on my channel as of when I'm recording this. And that's crazy because I was just hitting 200 the other day. So really exciting for things coming up. Anyway, something new I learned. Two words, parachuting beavers. I seem to learn new things every week from my Jeopardy obsession. And this week was no exception. So basically, I watch two episodes of Jeopardy every weekday with my mom, and it's one of like the highlights of my day. I love it so much. I just love the format of the show. I love the content of the show. It's like the only game show that I like really love. But anyway, so this week I learned that around 1950, the state of Idaho had professional trappers relocate a bunch of beavers that had overpopulated some areas. And there's like, if you look it up on YouTube, there's hilarious footage of the parachuting beavers on YouTube that was released by the Idaho Historical Society or something um, a few years ago. And yeah, I highly recommend you check it out. It seems that no beavers were harmed in this process also, so that's very good. But that's what I learned that's new this week. I learned beavers in parachutes, making it safely to the ground and starting a new life somewhere else. As for a book update, I'm still in the middle of reading The Renaissance Soul and it is still very good. It is a bit challenging to like do all the activities the book wants me to. I wasn't really expecting this to be such a, such a, I mean, it's like self-helpy, but also like such a activity centered book, but they're really good and positive. I just like want to keep reading and then I kind of have to stop. So anyway, um, it's been a really good way for me to think about all my passions and why I'm doing them and why I enjoy them and kind of how to delegate time to each of my passions. Also, I cleaned out a lot of my books from my childhood collection, which was so fun to go through, but now I don't read a ton of those books anymore, so I'm going to be dropping them off. This is my plan. I'm going to drop them off in the tiny libraries in my area, you know, those little boxes that have the little roofs on them, and then you can put books in there. They're so cute. I'm so into them. My future house will have a tiny library, so get excited for that. But I'm really excited to share some of my favorites with the kids in my neighborhood. I ended up putting a Percy Jackson book in, like the first one, in the little library near me because I know that those are kind of a hot commodity right now. At least if you're trying to like get it from the library, it's very difficult. Like there's a long wait time. So I'm hoping a kid enjoys that. And then there's another book um, called Becoming Naomi Leon by Pam Munoz Ryan, who wrote Esperanza Rising. And I put that in the box too. I just also wanted to mention those because those are two great books if you want to get back into reading YA type stuff again. Um, but I am allowing some of these books to stay with me and they're staying on my shelf because they're just all-time faves, top tier, Elise approved. 
I will tell them to you now. It's the Mysterious Benedict Society series is outstanding. I love it so much. And Chasing Vermeer, that series, is also so amazing. And the, um, the illustrations from Chasing Vermeer are by Brett Helquist, who also did the illustrations for a series of unfortunate events. So... Yes, Mysterious Benedict Society and Chasing Vermeer. Check those books out if you're looking for some great YA and children's books if you want to hop on the train that I'm on and reread them. But I also realized from going through all of these that I really was attached to the illustrations on the front covers of these books. And I just think that that's something I would like to do in the future myself, like especially anytime I got to look at a new Mysterious Benedict Society or the Chasing Vermeer series. Like Brett Helquist is such an amazing illustrator. He's done so much good work. He is just so successful too. And yeah, I was just, you know, going through all these books and really remembering how I really admired a lot of the illustrations on the front covers of them. So maybe I can do some book cover illustrations in my future. Looking forward to that. So getting into the specific episode topic for this podcast, because I'm trying to be more organized and have something specific to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about getting out of the house. Um, and these are just ways that I usually just, how I how I get the heck out of my house. So, you know, for a while, obviously, me and everyone else in the world was, we were inside because of the pandemic. But even then, I was able to find ways to kind of get out of the house. I am, you know, I definitely categorize myself as an introvert. But I recently heard about something, I forget where I heard it, but there's kind of this idea of like introverts also liking to like be in the same place as people and seeing people. And I've kind of touched on that in the podcast um, before, but I just really like kind of seeing areas of other people doing things, but not necessarily interacting with them. So anyway, here are some ways that I am getting out of the house and doing so safely. So one big thing is doing some drawings outside and journaling outside. This is really just in my backyard. Most of the time, I don't really go anywhere to do that much anymore. I did for a little bit when I was completing my outdoor studio class, but... Now, I just prefer to do it in my backyard, but I really love my backyard and spending time out there, and sometimes I'll do a little sketching in my front yard as well. Um, another thing that I did recently that was very fun, a very positive experience, 10 out of 10, was I just decided, it was whenever there had been a lot of rain last week, and the high was like 62 in Austin, and that was like at the beginning of September. It was crazy. It's never this cold. And I think that did set a record actually. Like it hadn't been that cold since they started taking measurements of the weather in Austin in like the 40s or something. Anyway, I love that kind of fallish weather. So it was a nice bit of time that I was like, I had my walk in the morning, but I want to take another walk in the afternoon if I can actually do that. And I want to enjoy this weather outside as much as possible, but I don't want to just sit in my backyard. Anyway, all of this information before this story aside, I walked to HEB, which is a pretty significant walk from my house. Um, but I went there and I bought just one of those like buckets of apples and I just bought it, left the store and I just ate it on my way back. And it was one of the most positive experiences I have had in a long time, really enjoyed myself. It was one of those things that was just kind of random and it's just it's just very fun to do. So I really enjoyed doing that. So if you have a grocery store, convenience store, something like that near you, go walk there and buy some apples, even if it's a long walk, and then eat them on your way back. It's delicious, it's healthy, wonderful. Speaking of walks, that's another way that I've been getting out of my house. I talk about this a lot, but I always go on a morning walk with my dogs and it's so wonderful and I've been doing that since March when I had to move back home and I've basically done it every day unless it's been raining and it's very nice and it kind of gets my day started on a really good note. I've kind of had to figure out whether or not I like to listen to podcasts or music while I walk or what I think about, you know, walking in silence. I... It depends. I think I prefer a shorter walk and not listening to any music or having my headphones in. But if I'm on a longer walk, a podcast is nice. But anyway, 
great time to myself or just with me and my dogs. And I think now that things are starting to cool down a bit, I might even start doing an evening walk. So these are just some suggestions for you. But now it's good because the streets aren't super crowded with like a ton of people like they were earlier on when everyone was at home with their kids over the summer and not really working. I apologize for that text message. I'm gonna say, Kara, it's your fault. Oh my gosh, I need to turn that off. Anyway, so the other thing I do oftentimes, and this is not the best thing to do all the time, but I will go get coffee or some sort of beverage at Starbucks. But I mean, you can just go drive to one, drive somewhere near you and just go get a drink. I know this is like the least original idea and a very easy way to get out of the house, but figured I'd include it because it's what I have done. Another thing that I would suggest is to kind of have like maybe one day a week where you go get food and eat out. Again, the least original idea ever, but that's just something I've been doing. Again, um, I go and get food at one of my favorite places. I often go to B. Terry's, which is my all-time favorite burger place. They were the one place where I liked the veggie burger before, like, this was before I quit eating beef, and I was like, wow, the veggie burger is better than the beef. I should just start eating these all the time, and they're so good, and I get it, like, every week, and I listen to Mike's Mike's podcast, <laughs> like, every single time I go there. It's weird. Anyway, so have, like, one place you go once a week, at least, if you're definitely, like, trying to save money, and just have that be your special time. Listen to a podcast. Go through the drive through Maybe choose a place that has a really long drive through line and just sit in it. I love sitting in drive through lines. Anyway, another thing you can do and that I have definitely done is to be at your house's mail lady or mailman, something like that. I am the main person in my house who really goes and checks the mail and that's just a nice way for me to get out of the house again. I will either walk to my mailbox or drive there and maybe, you know, go to like Starbucks or pick up a prescription on my way out and I really like it. I think that's a good little easy thing to do. Um, you can also just go for a drive. I can't say that I have gone out of my way to go for a drive throughout this time, but I do tend to take the long way home if I can, if I'm kind of up north or if I'm going somewhere in uh, one particular part of Austin. I because I went to high school around that area I know several different ways of getting home from there and they are definitely longer than taking the main highway home um, but it's really nice to just drive through and go back through areas that really trigger a lot of memories you know I've mentioned that I'm trying to do things like that to kind of remember positive things about my experiences in Austin and yeah just try and take the long way home I would suggest I think that's something I've really gotten a lot out of and finally, one of my favorite things to do is to go on a car picnic and I will sometimes, you know, pick up that food that I mentioned before and I will drive out to this park near me or just to a different park somewhere else in Austin and I'm just gonna, I open the back of my car and I sit and I eat my food and I just enjoy being outside but not being quite outside and I don't have to like sit on the grass, deal with the ants and the bugs. I'm not a big fan of them. Even though I know that they're not going to bother me, I just, I can't do bugs. But I really like doing this and I think especially in the fall, it's going to be such a nice thing to be able to do. Even when it gets cold and it's like kind of too cold to be outside, you can still just sit in the back of your car and chill. But also normal picnics are great too and it's just a great time to spend time by yourself and enjoy nature or enjoy a book or a drawing or something like that. So anyway, I hope that maybe you got something out of this episode. Maybe you have been feeling it really stuck inside lately and maybe one of these can be possible for you. I tried to choose a few different things that could be doable, whether or not you have a car or whether or not you're trying to save some money and not like eat out all the time and do things. But anyway, um, Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what, what you think of the mic quality, if it has just improved your experience so much, or if you think I really need a um, wind cover, because I know I do. <laughs> but I really appreciate you listening to this podcast and all of my podcasts. I have had a really fun time making them, and I will see you next week. Um, also, make sure 
you check out this drawing on my Instagram and subscribe to my channel. Give this podcast a rating on Apple Podcasts. Um, Yeah, have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you next time.